In the previous lessons, we imported data from our Excel file into Power BI Desktop. Before we manipulate or analyze this data, we'll take some time to get acquainted to the Power BI user interface. At the top of the page is the ribbon, broken down into various tabs. This should look familiar if you've used any other Microsoft applications. The Home tab provides various common functions. You can get new data, edit your current data, create new measures and columns, or publish your report to Power BI on the internet. The Insert tab lets you add various elements to your report, such as new pages, new visuals, or objects, including buttons and text boxes. The Modeling tab allows you to manipulate the data you've imported to Power BI. The View tab allows you to adjust the theme of the report, switch to phone layout, adjust the look of the report page and how objects are added to it, or make other adjustments to the view settings. The Help tab offers links to a variety of Power BI help and training materials. When we add objects such as visualizations to a report, other tabs may appear on the ribbon. These are called context tabs and provide information relevant to that object. Below the ribbon, we can see three icons on the left side of the screen. We can use these icons to switch between the three options for viewing our data in Power BI Desktop. The default view is Report View, and the white space is called the Canvas. This is where we'll build the visualizations that make up our Power BI reports. At the bottom of the report are the page controls. Here, we can add new pages, delete existing ones, or rename pages by double-clicking on the title, just as we would for Sheets in Excel. Let's look at the data view. This shows our data in a tabular format. Each table contains several columns. At the top of each column is an arrow. If we select one of these arrows, a drop-down menu allows us to sort or filter the data in that column. We can also use the checkboxes to decide which values we want to include or exclude. We can use the fields pane on the right to see each of the tables we've loaded. We'll use the data view a lot in later courses as we add new columns and measures. For now, we can use it to see how our data has been imported into Power BI. Let's select the transaction data table and take a look. We'll select the client column and then select the column tools tab at the top of the page to see that it's been assigned the text data type. In Power BI, every column must have a single data type. Data types determine how data is stored in the data model. When we import a data set, Power BI will automatically assign a data type to each column in each table. For example, client is text, charge out rate is whole numbers, and budget rate per hour is a decimal number. To the right of data type, we can also see a setting called format. Formats determine how values are displayed in the charts we create. Let's change the format for the budget rate column by navigating to the currency button and selecting US dollars. Notice that the column is now formatted as a currency and all values have been reduced to two decimal places. Let's apply the same formatting to the value column. We'll now move on to the fee earner table and apply this formatting to the budget rate column here as well. If we navigate to the format dropdown, we can see that there are many numeric formats. Having the correct number format can make Power BI reports easier to understand when presenting to your team or management. It's a good idea to make a habit of formatting your tables appropriately when you create a report in Power BI. The third view icon takes us to the modeling view. Here, we see a diagrammatic representation of the tables in our model. If we select any table, the Properties tab on the right populates, allowing us to adjust various properties of that table. We can also select the three dots in the header of a table to access various options relating to each table. We'll learn about many of these options in later courses. Note that our tables are currently spread across the available space. We'll bring them closer together by selecting a table header and dragging the table to our preferred location. We can also adjust the size of a table by selecting an edge and dragging. The lines joining the tables 
indicate that Power BI has detected relationships. A relationship can form when the same data appears in more than one table. In this example, the same clients appear in the debtor days table and the transaction data table. Similarly, fee earners appear in both the transaction data table and the fee earner by division table. As we'll see in a future lesson, Relationships allow us to easily create charts that incorporate data from multiple tables. We can also see the type of relationship from the numbers at each end of the lines. Both lines have a 1 at one end and an asterisk at the other. In this context, an asterisk means many, so these are many to one relationships. Each client appears only once in the debtor days table but can appear many times in the transaction data table. Similarly, each fee earner only appears once in the fee earner by division table, but can appear many times in the transaction data table. We'll cover relationships in more detail in a later course. This completes our lesson on the Power BI user interface. In the next lesson, we'll look at the visualizations pane and build our first visualization.